from William Rowie's plans sprung a legend that was to carry the hopes and dreams of all of Nova Scotia. My connection to the Blue Nose, I'm very proud of it. My great-grandfather was William James Rui, who was the designer of the Blue Nose. There's not many of us left uh, in this area. It's originally French Huguenot, um, but uh, as a lot of people think that we are from Lunenburg, uh, we're actually, uh, they migrated to Halifax, and my great-grandfather uh, in the early 1900s moved to Dartmouth. So we're Halifax Dartmouth based for the last six generations. learned his skills. He was actually self-taught uh, for the most part. He went to the um, uh, uh, art college in Halifax uh, for less than a full year, um, but his greatest learning came from um, a book called the Dixon Kemp. It was the Naval Architects Bible back at the turn of the century, and they had a copy of that in the library at the Yacht Club in Halifax. So he would work his daytimes at the family soda pot factory, and then he would uh, go to the library at the Yacht Squadron at night and study the Dixon Camp. It, it influenced his career as a naval architect, um, probably allowed him to become a professional naval architect. Uh, the fact that number one, he was, with a, he was working for a family business uh, he was he was close to 40 years old when Blue Nose was designed, and that was his 17th design. Um, his father passed away in uh, 1925, so what, four years after Blue Nose was launched. The success of Blue Nose at that time um, allowed him to eventually uh, hang his plaque out as a full-time naval architect. But uh, in the 10 years between when he did that and the launch of Blue Nose, he was a part-time naval architect. So huh, I'm sure that probably working for the family business maybe gave him the luxury of, of being able to, to do that. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, I think it, it was an evolving role. Uh, he started at the bottom at the, at the family business at the pop factory as a clerk and worked his way into a, a co-owner role after his dad passed away. So that probably gave him some business uh, base to, uh, to use as he became a professional naval architect. And of course that was a business for him as well. As a child, uh, when he went to school, um, William James Rui, uh, well, his dad at the time had started the pop factory, his passion, for whatever reason, it, it didn't run in the family genes, uh, was, was boats. Um, stories I've been told and read that as a child that he would often uh, get in trouble with the teacher because rather than doing his arithmetic while sitting at his desk, he'd be doodling pictures of boats. Um, he would, uh, he, he evolved from that to building models. Um, the boats, four or five foot models of sailing boats that he would take to ponds in Halifax and, and race. Um, and, you know, there's a story that goes that he actually asked his dad when he was maybe nine, 10 years old to put outside ballast 
on one of these models that he built. And at the time, that was something that, you know, just wasn't heard of in this area for racing schooners. And as he grew older, he was doing amateur yacht design. So they were just, they were sailboats. Um, Babette, uh, which they have at the museum in Halifax, was one of his first designs. He numbered his designs because often when, when he designed the vessels, the name for the vessel wasn't known. So his, his numbering system for his portfolio was, was numbers. Um, Blue Nose was design number 17. He had not up until the time that he was asked to design a fishing schooner that could compete and beat the Americans in the International Fisherman's Trophy had he designed a large vessel or a fishing schooner. Um, it was a, the success of the smaller sailboats that he had designed um, that, that allowed him to become well known as a naval architect in the area. There were no other naval architects in the area. He was, he was at the cutting edge of that technology. Prior to then, they uh, usually built schooners um, from, from models, from half models. Somebody would make a half model, carve it out, and, and they would use those lines to build the boats. So he was approached to design this fishing schooner. Um, he actually submitted a design. He toiled over his, over his naval architecture uh, blueprints and submitted a design three weeks before it was actually due. And that was rejected because the water line was too long. So he went back to his drawing board, literally, and uh, came up with another design which was to be design number 17, submitted it uh, to, the, to the committee and it was accepted and that vessel became Blue Nose. I did want to add that during the construction of Blue Nose and all of the vessels that W.J. Rui designed, he was hands-on. He didn't just, uh, you know, draw a blueprint, send it off to the builder and move on to the next one, forget about it. He was, he, he had, my dad told me quite often that W.J. Rui insisted on the right of first and last approval on anything that was built to his design. So he was very active in going to the shipyard um, and, um, you know, just, uh, just looking at how things were being done and making sure that they were being done to a specification. So the last race uh, was held off Gloucester. The series was tied to a piece. The Americans were eager to uh, to win that race so that Blue Nose would, would not be the undefeated champion of the International Fisherman's Trophy. And while the Canadians were just as determined that uh, Blue Nose would win and would remain the undefeated champion. Um, so with the series tied to a piece, my great grandfather was contacted actually by the premier of the province. Um, and they were asking him to go to Gloucester. Uh, apparently the, the schooner was sitting too low in the water and they wanted him to go to Gloucester to see what he, you know, what he might suggest that they could do to, to get her in better trim. Uh, so he did, I mean, they, they, they had a very limited amount of time. Um, he agreed to go and they actually held the ferry in Yarmouth for him uh, to get on that boat so he could get across to Maine and get down to Gloucester. And when he got there, he took a look at it. He suggested that they take some weight out of it, some of the ballast off the ship. Uh, the uh, water line came up and she won the last race. So she did remain the undefeated uh, Queen of the North Atlantic and the International Fisherman's Trophy. Luno's was the design for W.J. Rui that brought him the greatest success and allowed him to become a professional naval ar architect. Um, but, you know, in his words, it was, it was just one of his designs, you know, so each and every one of them held a special place in his heart of equal value. Um, so, you know, he, uh, you know, any any time you would have sailed on Blue Nose, it would have been as a guest or you know to, to help them if they if they requested help as far as trim or handling or anything like that, uh, but not uh, not just for social reasons. Mm -hmm. 
my understanding is that they had a, a very healthy respect for each other. Um, I don't believe they were close friends, but um, but certainly uh, acquaintances and uh, absolutely respected what the other one brought to the table. As for accolades, yes, uh, WJ Rue, we did receive uh, numerous accolades over the years. Uh, I, th I think there's probably two that um, resonated with him. And I'm going to say the, the top of the list uh, would have been a gold watch that he was presented from the town of Dartmouth, then the town of Dartmouth, 19, in December of 1921, after Blue Nose uh, won the first International Fisherman's Trophy. Um, uh, he was a proud citizen of Dartmouth, so, and I, I, know, I know that that uh, that that resonated and meant a tremendous amount to him. Uh, that gold watch was that actually passed down through the family. He made sure that it stayed in the family. Uh, and it's, it's now at the Canadian Museum of History in Ottawa as part of the um, Beyond Blue Nose exhibit for W.J. Rui. Uh, and I think the other one would have been an award that he received from the Armbale Yacht Club. He was a lifetime member, former Commodore, um, that type of thing. So those two things would have been the, the two awards that uh, meant the most. He was a very humble man. So, um, you know, while he accepted the awards graciously, uh, you know, he, he, was, he was very humble. The Blue Nose legacy is uh, is very strong. It was, it was strong back in the day. When you when you look, I still get goosebumps when I look at some of the um, video footage from the the races back in the day um, of the original Blue Nose, and uh, you know you can see the the feeling of pride and patriotism that Canadians felt in having this vessel designed by a Canadian built by Canadians and trickles down to Nova Scotia and to and certainly to Lunenburg. I think that's something that um, every generation strives to to feel and be a part of. And I think even more now, uh, since COVID, I think it's something people latch on to, um, latch on to these good news stories. And it was a really good news story. It was a feel good story. Um, you know, it's, it's something that uh, Canadians can can boast about, can stick their chest out and, and hey, this vessel beat the Americans, which is, that's, that's quite a thing. You know, you look at even, you can relate it related to hockey, you know, when Team Canada, you know, meets Team USA, it's, that's the biggest game of the series. And when Team Canada wins, that's a, a national celebration. So I think that uh, the story resonates for, for that same type of reason. It's a really good, feel good, all Canadian story. The Royal Canadian Mint has in 2021, on January the 12th of 2021, it was a, a day I had circled on my calendar. Um, they launched a, a series of coins uh, to commemorate uh, the 100th anniversary of Blue Nose. Uh, the flagship coin, I'll call for lack of a better term, is their proof dollar uh, for this year, for 2021. And it is a, a tribute to William James Rui, which you know, I mean, I don't even have the words to describe what that means to the Rui family. Um, to uh, to see the coin represent him uh, with his vision, you know, to go from the uh, from the design phase to the vessel, uh, and showing uh, it's an actual recreation of his design, the hull design for Blue Nose, and his arms working on it, and to have a signature. On that coin, it like I said, I mean, there's there's just not a word, not a word that I can I can find to describe how proud we are of that. Um, and I think it, it the other thing that's really important to uh, us as a family is that it perpetuates his legacy um, through eternity. Uh, coin collectors um, will have those coins and the story that goes along with it. They don't spend them; they save them. They pass them along to generations or they sell them to other coin collectors. So um, it will etch his legacy into, his, into the history books forever. The Blue Nose story, you know, when you tell it, uh, William J. Rui is certainly an integral part of that story, but he's only a part of that story. And I say that with all due respect to him and to the rest of the, of the, the, um, the team that made Blue Nose what she was. He was one cog on the wheel. There was Captain Angus Walters, there were the shipbuilders, 
um, you know, the, there were the, the men that sailed the vessel. Uh, it was the perfect storm, you know, no pun intended, but everything came together perfectly for that vessel. The design absolutely had something to do with it, but if it hadn't had competent shipbuilders or, you know, really, really great sailors or, or you know, the best captain that was on the seas at the time, um, you know, it, it would have been just another schooner. So, you know, like I said, I mean, I, I absolutely am so proud of my my connection to the Blue Nose story and to be the great granddaughter of William James Ruey, but I absolutely recognize that he was, you know, he, he's only he's only a part of the story. As far as his ingenuity and, uh, you know, the way he was described at the time, again, he was a very humble man. So I'm sure he would have, that would have just rolled off of his shoulders. Um, you know, that he, he was only doing what he knew how to do and doing it to the best of his ability. Uh, there's actually, there's an, there's an article um, that's available that he wrote, which is, um, uh, it was published in December of 1921. And it was, um, again, written by William James Ruey. And it was uh, the story about uh, why Blue Nose was as good as it was in his own words. Um, and he talked about the design. He talked about the fact that he gave her the power to carry sail, but he also talked about the hull design and, um, and how he created such a perfect hull design. Um, he used uh, something called the waveform theory. And the waveform theory was a calculation that he used to determine um, along with the weight of the wood and the vessel and, and all the other things that he would have calculated into it that would create the least resistance for the hull as it went through the water. Um, so, you know, least resistance with the hull, it's going to make it go faster. So it, it wasn't just a, a fluke, you know, it, it was a, a an, an engineering process as well as naval architecture. And, um, you know, obviously he was very proud of that. The Olin family that built Blue Nose too, uh, they approached my great grandfather to use his plans, and he uh, he agreed to that. Um, the only change that was made uh, to Blue Nose two versus the original Blue Nose, and the design was um, was uh, below decks. Uh, the original Blue Nose was uh, it was a fishing the working fishing vessel, so it was uh, it had you know very sparse quarters, and it had uh, the holds to carry the fish back to port. Uh, Blue Nose two uh, was to be used. It was basically a luxury yacht, um, you know, when it was uh, the, the original concept for it, it, while it was a legacy to Blue Nose, it was twofold. It was built to uh, to uh, bear the brand for the Olin schooner beer at the time. And in the winter, the Olin family actually had it sailed to, uh, to the Southern Seas and they used it as a private yacht. So it was very luxurious below decks compared to the sparse accommodations that were in the original Blue Nose. You know, with generations today, um, so many don't know what that sailing ship is that's on the back of the 10 cent piece. Um, so, you know, if you are if you see it doing sail past and you can actually point out to your child or your grandparents or your best friend to somebody, say, hey, you know, that is the boat that's on the back of our dime. It means something. You know, I mean, it, virtually everybody, you know, if you have a dime in your pocket, you're carrying a picture of the blue nose. So, you know, I think it resonates from that standpoint as well. Come here, my boy, come sit with me. Quickly now, she's a sight to see. Look out towards the islands. Just off to the east That's a famous schooner's twin From a day I love to live again She's from the days of wooden ships The days of iron men When I was young so long ago From this very spot you know I used to sit for hours just to view the scene To see their canvas catch the breeze Those wooden ships that rule the seas In the days of wooden ships The days of iron men Now 
every time I see that boat You know this lump comes in me throat It's when I know if there is a God He'll set my one wish free That heaven holds the special bay Where hundreds like are sailed each day Is in the days of wooden ships The days of Iron Man Was a time when men were strong The work was hard, their days were long A time when men were measured By their efforts and not their pay Those iron men now world-renowned They built this province, built these towns In the days of wooden ships The days of iron men Come on, my boy, she slipped away To leave me dreaming once again It's I that owns her It's I that holds your wheel I steer her through a dusty sea To that place in time I long to be To the days of wooden ships The days of iron men Every time I see that boat You know this lump comes in me throat That's when I know if there's a God He'll set my one wish free Let heaven hold the special bay Where hundreds like are sailed each day As in the days of wooden ships The days of iron men the days of iron